Some of you guys may know it. Actually, who here has never seen Sleepy Giant before? Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for being here. Who, who has seen us before? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. More! <laughs> Feed my ego. Okay, so don't do that. That was bad. Okay, so. Well, this, this song is personal. It's part of my story. I, I don't like when uh, Christian people show up and they they bludgeon you to death with a message and they never let you into who they are. I think that's how people fall apart in private. So every time we play, I don't just want to share my message, which is that God has established the most perfect way to have complete and total relationship with Him forever through Jesus and the covenant that's been established over 2,000 years ago. That's like my message, I love it. But I don't just come to share a message with you guys, I come to share my life. And that's what I loved about the hardcore scene, that's what I loved about being a part of this for so long is that in Salt Lake at least, if I would have been doing this some years ago, some of my friends probably would have jumped up on stage and knocked me out just because they're like, stop preaching. And I'm like, no. Anyway, so, um, I have the microphone and you don't. But in general, I just want to let you guys know, like, this is a story that may have touched someone that you know or you yourself. When I was like four or five years old, I lived in St. Louis with my, my mom and my dad before they got separated. And uh, I got molested by this babysitter that was supposed to be looking out for me. And uh, I didn't realize how bad it messed me up until I got married real young. Some of you guys know my story, but I, I just was a mess. I got married real young. I got divorced real young. And uh, part of that was my fault. Part of that's on me for sure. Because um, I was just all screwed up. I didn't know. I didn't know how bad it had affected me. And so I remember being really pissed off at this sick, twisted person. And I remember thinking, you pervert, you stole from me. Like you stole from me. You took something that didn't belong to you. And you, you didn't just steal from me, you stole from me. And you stole from my first wife. And you didn't just steal from me and my first wife. You stole from me, my first wife, and my little girl. Because now her family's broken. And I remember that I would, if I could have, I would have just, I'd have murdered her. And I got encountered by this, this God I didn't believe in. And he confronted me. He, conf he confronted me with unconditional love. I couldn't get away. I got like haunted. And I remember him saying, if I can forgive you, can you forgive them? And I realized that forgiveness for me, it's not them making it right. She can never give me back what she took from me. But it's that she owes me. And I'm choosing to say it's real. You really owe me. And I'm, I'm choosing to let go of the debt. And a lot of us come to these festivals and we go to church every Sunday and we have no idea what kind of bondage we're really in. We have mercenary little hearts and they're all locked up and we're all pissed off and I get it. That's why I'm a part of the scene. But I just want to give you guys an opportunity. If you've been the victim of physical or emotional or sexual or spiritual abuse, I hear a lot of stupid Christian talk. Like God the Father sent that pervert into your life to teach you a lesson. I just want to tell you that is a lie. I'm a dad. I got three kids. I got a fourth on the way. I would never in a million years, I would never send someone to my 15-year-old to teach her. I'd never do that to my son. He's six. I would never do that. What kind of sick dad would I be if I would do that to my own kids? It's wrong and it's not who he is. And I just want to give you permission to be royally pissed off. But don't blame him. He gave everyone freedom and some people screw it up. And I'd rather have freedom than have control. And so I'm grateful to God for forgiveness. If you're the victim here tonight, somebody owes you. If I could as a big brother, I would knock them out and I'd kick their teeth out and I'd drag them to you so you could choose to forgive them. But they're not here right now. I'm asking you, if you're the victim and somebody owes you and you haven't forgiven them, I'm asking you to just make a fist and put it up in the air because we need to clean house tonight. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to ask that on the count of three that you would see the debt. It's real. They really owe you. They stole from you. And 
I, I want you to choose to let it go. I'm going to count to three, and then we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to settle accounts in Jesus. Go ahead and close your eyes. If you're one of the brave ones with your hands up, I'm so proud of you for, for taking this moment. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to see the debt. And when I say three, I want you to let it go, and I want you to keep your hands up, and we're going to pray for you. If you're with someone and they got their hand up, I want you to put your hand on them, and I want you to bless them. This is community. This is where we take the grave clothes off so they can go free. I'm going to count to three and ask you guys to let go of the debt. One, two, three. Just let it go right now. We choose to forgive. Repeat after me. Father, I choose to forgive. Father, I choose to forgive in Jesus' name. I choose to forgive the debt. They don't owe me anymore. They don't owe me anymore. They don't owe me anymore. I set them free. I let them go. Holy Spirit, right now, fill the hearts of these brave men and women with their hands up. Right now, fill in the broken places right now in Jesus' name. Go with them. Father, give them all of the memory and none of the pain right now in Jesus' name. Restore what the enemy has stolen from them. By the power of your love, by the power of the shed blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit, move in the lives of these people and heal them right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to count to three. I want everybody to shout. I want you to lift up a shout of praise right now. This is our death knell. Say law. This is this. This is us splitting the heavens with our praise. Everybody on the count of three, lift up a shout of praise. And I don't mean like a Jesus. I mean like a shout of praise from our culture. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. This song is called Eyes Wide Open. Because I live in a real world, but I believe in a real God, and I pray with my eyes open.